I've decided to start vlogging on the new Money Button YouTube channel. And the idea is that I'm going to vlog hopefully every single day leading up to the new launch of the Money Button on August 20th. So I'm going to vlog about all the usual stuff like Bitcoin Cash and cryptocurrency and things like that. But also obviously the Money Button and you know what, what, what we're doing, what's the status of, of writing the software for the Money Button as well as everything else like what our branding strategy is, design strategy, marketing, everything like that. So certainly part of the marketing strategy is I'm going to be making videos regularly uh, about stuff. And the theory here is that by simply creating high quality content about uh, Bitcoin Cash specifically and also cryptocurrency and blockchain more broadly and the money button itself, uh, that uh, we'll basically build an audience that's interested in, in this stuff, that's uh, you know, people that are interested in, in basically using the money button either as a, uh, a, uh, either as a, a sort of application developer or as a publication or as an end user. So today I want to talk about an important subject that's very relevant to the money button, which is uh, the, the issue of zero conf transactions on Bitcoin Cash, but also potentially you know, any, any other cryptocurrency like Bitcoin or Litecoin or something like that, or, or Ethereum. Um, so first of all, what is, what is zero conf? So zero conf is just this idea that, look, if you understand how Bitcoin, how blockchains work, uh, you have to wait for transactions to confirm in a block. And I'll, I'll use Bitcoin as a frame of reference here. So uh, Bitcoin uses a 10 minute block interval. So that, that means that blocks arrive on average every 10 minutes or so. Uh, so when you broadcast a transaction, it's really important that the, the network agrees to what transaction is valid. Uh, and the valid transactions are the ones that ultimately go inside of a block. Uh, if you try to use a transaction before it's confirmed, uh, you actually don't have the consensus mechanism of Bitcoin. Uh, and so it's possible to double spend. So somebody could broadcast two conflicting transactions uh, and you don't know whether you're actually going to get your money. The only way you know that you've actually got your money is if that transaction confirms in a block. And so the idea of relying on no confirmations is called zero conf. And it turns out that although this is sort of a pre-consensus, uh, sort of, a, I guess you could call it a protocol or you could call it sort of a, sort of a convention, uh, in Bitcoin Cash, we can rely on zero conf transactions because of a few sort of properties of, of how, uh, how, the, how the network works. Uh, so uh, on Bitcoin Cash, uh, you know, so, <clears throat> okay, so let's, let's think about the, what happens when you build and, and broadcast a Bitcoin transaction. Uh, so when you, uh, you know, spend your UTXOs, you broadcast a Bitcoin transaction, I'm talking this it applies either to Bitcoin or to Bitcoin Cash. Uh, the network, you, you send it to your peers, so you send it to other nodes on the network who relay it. And the idea is that eventually that transaction gets to a miner, and the miner then builds up just sort of a list of transactions that they're, they're including in, in their block. And so one of the miners will include it uh, in a block. Um, so the problem here is that let's suppose you uh, broadcast two conflicting transactions simultaneously. So I, I send you know, somebody money, I send my friend Alice some money, uh, and at the same time I uh, build a transaction that sends the money back to myself. Uh, and what I do is I give one transaction to Alice, and then at the exact same moment I broadcast a conflicting transaction, the double spend that sends money back to myself, on the other side of the planet. And you actually can do this uh, correctly. Like It actually is possible to broadcast them simultaneously. I mean, basically what I do is I send one transaction to the other side of the planet. I know that takes about 100 milliseconds or so. And so I wait 100 milliseconds, and then I give the other tr transaction to Alice. So Alice thinks she's received money, but 50% of the network approximately actually sees the other transaction. And so when the second transaction comes in, they ignore it. So half the nodes see one transaction that sends money to Alice. The other half the nodes see another transaction that sends money back to myself. So there's a 50% probability in this case that uh, Alice is going to be double spent, that she thinks she received money, perhaps she gives me something in exchange, such as a, a physical item that I purchased from her or whatever, uh, but actually I've, I've conned her because I've double spent that transaction, and 50% of the time that other transaction will end up being inside of a, a block. Um, so I could make it worse by collaborating with a miner. Uh, if I actually collaborated directly with a miner who has, say, 50% of the network hash power, then I could bump up the probability of a double spend to say more like 75% or so. So that's a hypothetical you know, sort of possibility there. It would be pretty bad if there was a miner with 50% of the network uh, uh, power. 
that's another issue. But anyway, the point is that th that's sort of the that, that's sort of what zero conf is. So zero conf is just the idea that Alice accepts that transaction before it's actually in a block. So there's a probability that she's going to be double spent. And so what we want to do is we want to lower that probability of double spins so that we can actually use zero conf in practice. And in fact, actually without doing anything at all, the probability is actually pretty low that you're going to be double spent because no one double spins. I mean, it just doesn't actually happen most of the time. So if you look at what fraction of the transactions are double spins, it's actually a very small fraction, although there are some that exist. And you can see some of them that are tracked at a website called, I think it's doublespin.cash. Uh, you can see some that are tracked. Okay, so here's, here's what we're going to do with the new version of the money button. We have this sort of software half finished, but we have a pretty good answer to this. So here's how it works. First of all, when a user broadcasts a transaction on you know, using the money button, we let the merchant know or the app developer or publication know right away that there's a, a valid zero conf transaction that has occurred. But if you are receiving a lot of money, you might need to wait for the confirmed transaction to go through. Uh, but you want to know, like, can I act on this right now? So you want to have some idea that this is probably going to go through. So the way we do this is we're going to set up another node that we call the well-connected node on the opposite side of our planet of the planet from our servers. Uh, and the well-connected node has, a, has an important property. So we set the relay threshold for fees to be lower than the default because the standard relay threshold on the Bitcoin Cash Network is one Satoshi per byte. And what that means is when you broadcast your transaction, if you try to have fees that are less than one Satoshi per byte, most, most nodes will actually ignore it and they won't relay it so it won't get to a miner. So you need to pay at least that minimum threshold or you, you have a very low chance of actually being able to confirm your transaction. So what we do is we set up a well-connected node on the opposite side of the planet with a low relay threshold of zero Satoshis per byte. Okay, so it'll receive and relay transactions that are zero Satoshi per byte. This means that we see most of the transactions on the network. And it's important that it's on the opposite side of the planet from our servers, because that way, if someone tries to double spend us, one of our nodes will probably see the double spend. So anyway, we basically just allow the user to broadcast a transaction. It goes through our servers. Then we wait 100 milliseconds and we ping our, our well-connected node on the opposite side of the planet and say, do you see a conflicting transaction? Do you see a different transaction that spends the same UTXOs? If the answer is no, uh, then we're good. And it is very unlikely that there's going to be a double spend in that case. So that's our answer. We believe that works. It's sort of a, uh, so there's, a, there's an idea here that actually the way to deal with zero conf is a purely economic question. It doesn't really require any changes to Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash or anything like that. That it's really just a matter of what is the probability of a double spend and what is the value of that transaction? And is it okay to act within 100 milliseconds if you don't see a double spend? And so that's, that's our philosophy with the money button. And that's also the philosophy with yours.org. And that's sort of how we're going to solve this problem in practice almost all the time. Now, we also will detect double spends in malleability. Uh, if something like if a double spend occurs, we'll notice it when, when a different transaction gets confirmed. And technically, it could either be a double spend or malleability. So we'll also pin the, you know, the, the, uh, the application, the publication, or whatever with that information so you can act on that. Uh, if there actually is a double spend or malleability uh, event. Um, okay, so that's, that's it. Uh, so that's what we're, we're launching with uh, when we launch the money button in uh, August. So we're aiming for a launch date of August 20th. And in these videos, I'm going to keep covering subjects like this, uh, subjects that are important for Bitcoin Cash or cryptocurrency or the money button specifically. Uh, and it's going to be very similar to the other videos that I created uh, on my other channel, except everything's going to be revolving specifically around the money button. Uh, so thank you for watching, and, uh, and uh, the, the plan is to keep making videos like this as well as a number of articles as we lead up towards uh, the launch of the money button. And so I, I appreciate uh, you know, any feedback on this video, anything that you want me to talk about in future videos, please, as usual, let me know, and I can I factor all that stuff into the future videos and articles that I create about all this stuff. So thank you for watching.